Hey, welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. So whenever a major Windows 10 update comes out, it seems like there's always some type of problems. As you can see here, latest fix for Windows 10 breaks something else. Here we have new Windows 10 update warnings. And then here we have Microsoft broke Windows 10 audio too as well. And so this is something that has become all too common. And for people who actually use Windows 10, which is the majority of people, this can be a very frustrating experience. However, is it all that bad compared to Windows updates in the past? Well, I'm going to be talking about that and also be talking about mainly Windows 10 updates versus Linux updates because I myself use Linux Mint as my main operating system. And I'm going to kind of be comparing the two and just kind of seeing at the end which one is worse. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this by going into my Windows 10 operating system, which I have in a virtual machine. And so I'm going to start with some of the pros, at least from my perspective. Now, for anybody who uses Windows, they know that they're going to get some type of notification normally that tells them when an update uh, is ready. And then whenever you restart your computer, then the updates go into place. Now, the first pro that I could see today with Windows 10 updates is the fact that if I had to compare to Windows updates in the past, I think they're a lot less obtrusive. You know, they don't bother me as much and they're not quite as annoying. Whereas back in the day, they were extremely annoying uh, and most of the times they broke things. And I've been using Microsoft Windows ever since the DOS days. And so I feel that today, the updates on Windows 10, even through these other application updates, I think they're a lot better than they used to be. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, if you actually go into your Windows update settings, they do give you, I would say, better controls of when these updates come in. Whereas before, I don't think the control was uh, as, you know, uh, this detailed as it was. Now there is kind of a negative to this and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But you can control, you know, when you get the updates, how long you can delay updates. In this case, it's 35 days. Um, there's other things as well. There's delivery optimization and uh, privacy settings here as well. And so, yeah, more control there. And then uh, another thing I would say with the Windows 10 updates uh, is the fact that I think Microsoft, they're taking security a little bit more um, over priority, maybe a lot more. Because back in the day, for anybody who's used, been using Windows for a long time, it was known to just attract a whole bunch of viruses and malware, period. You know, if you wanted an insecure system, then you're going to be using Microsoft Windows. But as long as I've been using Windows 10, it's not like the old days where you would get viruses and malware pretty much on a regular basis. Whereas nowadays, I personally feel that with the security updates that they had and whatever they've done underneath the hood it really has prevented you know a lot of these issues security issues that i've actually experienced before okay and so those are the main pros that i could say uh, i've had with windows 10 overall and now let's get into some of the cons now when i stated this earlier i said like the type of interruptions aren't as bad definitely not as bad as it used to but they are still interruptions for example, uh, I think everybody goes through this. You get an update, you restart your computer, and then whenever you, you start your computer up again, it has to put all these updates in there. And honestly, that annoys me to no end because that means I have to wait until these updates go into place. And if it's a huge update, then it's going to take me a long time to get my computer started. And then in those rare cases or you know, compared to this news recently, well, it could break things and that just really irritates me and that just takes time out of you using your computer. So that is a huge con that I think I still have with Windows 10. But once again, it's not as bad as it used to be. And then another thing is, is the overall complexity. Okay. Now, even though they give you a lot of options here, which I think is nice, it's just that Windows 10 overall or just Windows it's really complex. It's more complex than you would think. And I don't think you would only see this if, if you use something like Linux, which most people would probably think that's for geeks. But I'm telling you, modern Linux, in my opinion, is so much simpler to use. 
than Windows or you know even for Apple Mac which is simpler than Windows 10 and if you just look here you go through these menus there's a lot of stuff you know even these things over here there's a lot of sub menus okay and so for a lot of people you know this is something that they're used to in Microsoft Windows but it is extremely complex in my opinion there's just a lot of areas where you might miss something which leads me to the last thing that I really don't like about Windows 10 updates and that is the whole privacy thing you know because with Windows 10 they are collecting a lot of data and it's not just to improve their software um, it's really to do a lot of advertising okay and marketing you know and me being a marketer I understand the importance of collecting data and uh, Microsoft collects a lot of data so as you can see here they have advertising stuff and the thing is a lot of these things are turned on by default and even if you change this more often than not Microsoft will uh, reset your settings whenever they update things and so you're always having to uh, do additional work or research to make sure that whatever settings you had before or maybe Microsoft added new tracking stuff more marketing stuff that you're not aware of and so there's just a lot of complexity and a lot of times the complexity is done on purpose so then people you know won't know of these things or they won't have the time and at the same time even if you did even if you're really good with technology as I stated earlier there's so many changes that they make that they could change settings that you already set or maybe add new settings okay so those are the main cons that I had you know I just still don't like the interruption and also the many ways that Microsoft is still you know just monitoring managing and just adding things to your operating system that honestly um, I don't really add, think adds to the overall experience you know it just takes a lot of control away from you and so that is the Windows 10 updates for all your web hosting needs check out Bluehost where you get a free domain for the first year free SSL certificate and 24 by 7 support with a special intro 30-day money-back guarantee all starting at just $3.95 per month for more information check out the affiliate link in the description area below so getting to the Linux updates and I am using Linux Mint uh, that is my preferred operating system and distribution so it's very simple if you go up here uh, this is the update manager and here it will tell you what updates are available and then in terms of other options they have preferences here where you could come and adjust your preferences very similar to Windows 10 but I think this is a lot easier you could blacklist updates as well so I'll show you how that works you can add a manually just type it in but honestly that's a little confusing or you could say just apply all the updates which I don't recommend and so you know the way that you would actually you know block an update you could choose an update right here you could right click and you could ignore this update or ignore all future updates and you can also view your history just like you do with Windows 10 so you can see all the updates that you've had and those are the main things you know uh, you can look at other things more technical stuff like kernels okay but I think overall this is a much simpler process and then when it comes to something like privacy uh, the options that you have available in Linux Mint compared to Windows 10 it is like night and day how easy it is to actually set your settings here and there's the privacy option right here all you do is remember last access file yes or no that's it that is the only privacy option you have to remember and there's really not too many more things here okay compared to all the things that you actually have to do in Windows 10 you have to dig a lot and as I said a lot of these settings are changed or they're adding new settings and I just think it's a really confusing process and so that's the first pro that I could see it's just overall a lot simpler a lot cleaner and a lot less complex uh, in Linux Mint and um, just Linux in general at least for the major popular distributions now any other positives that I could think is really compared to the older versions of Linux when Linux first came out in 1991 back in the day Linux uh, as an operating system was definitely way more complex than Windows big time you know it, it was not easy uh, a lot of the stuff that you had to do was really geeky and things would break a lot 
Whereas nowadays with modern Linux, that's simply not the case. Yeah. And about the only times that you would have things that break most of the times, it's a kernel update. Uh, and so a lot of times, you know, if you're going to have a kernel update, uh, you could choose not to install those updates by just unclicking it. You know, kind of doing what I mentioned earlier, just right click and do that. And for me, that's pretty much the only times things really break. When you have a kernel update, that is a very important thing because all operating systems have a kernel. And so those are major changes. And that's usually when you're going to have things break, you know, like this, these things here. These are major updates. OK. And so those are like the pros that I had for Linux. Uh, in terms of the cons, it's just what I mentioned there. It's things that are breaking. But other than that, I really don't see many other cons. OK, especially if you're using something like Linux Mint, where it's made for more of the general user, everyday user who might use something like Windows 10 or Apple's Mac OS. And so these are like versions of Linux that are very easy to get into. And once you get it installed, you know, it's not very often that I actually have to spend a lot of time managing things. And another thing that uh, I would say is a pro is that the updates in Linux Mint, they're not annoying. I'm not going to get notifications constantly, you know, of like, hey, you need an update or I have this limit of 35 days. I update when I want to, you know, and pretty much every single time that I do updates, it doesn't change the settings that I had. As far as I recall, not anything major. You know, it's not going to change my privacy settings or add new privacy settings. Um, you know, nothing like that. Okay. Most of the times, if there are going to be new things added, uh, you'll normally see those things or they'll normally be very apparent. Okay. Let's just say that. Whereas in Windows 10, there's just so many things that are get put in there that most things are not apparent. And there's a lot of changes that are being done. And so I guess you could tell uh, out of the two, which one is worse. I would say Windows 10 is worse when it comes to updates, but I also have to be really objective. Overall, the whole update system Windows 10 is better than it was back in previous uh, versions of Microsoft Windows. That, that one thing I could say for sure. And in terms of the whole Linux world, it's definitely way better than previous versions of Linux. OK, so those are my thoughts on that on uh, Windows 10 updates versus Linux updates, you know, and my overall feelings and experience on that. And so if you actually had any thoughts in this, where whether you're using Windows 10, uh, Linux, or a combination of both, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. I'd like to know what your thoughts are. And if you are somebody who is currently using Microsoft Windows or Mac OS, and you actually wanted to make the move or maybe try to learn Linux, then I do have an entire playlist on how you can actually do that. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to 30 videos plus additional content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.